Thank you so much for that introduction and good afternoon to everyone attending. Um, my talk is going to be based on the current practices we engage with at Portland State University in Portland, Oregon. Um, and so I'm gonna jump right in. Uh, next slide, please. Um, I wanna really highlight what the librarian strengths are um, because I think sometimes as librarians, we tend to feel that we are not as engaged or, or have a different role to play on a campus university and don't always see that we are, we are an important part of the whole infrastructure of the campus and um, that we are good partners to be worked with, um, especially with research offices. Um, and we can help support the research enterprises at any given university, in part because we are trained uh, in the management and organization of information and scholarly um, content. And while we do focus a lot on teaching and learning, we do have a role to play that's really important with research. Um, librarians have a thorough understanding of content, metadata practices, and ontologies that are often used in literature reviews and data management planning, and are often the place on campus where locally produced scholarship is being curated and collected. Librarians are by their very nature interdisciplinary and oftentimes are working with multiple disciplines on a campus regularly. Lastly, we understand um, and have learned how the scholarly publishing infrastructure works because we're having to buy and collect that material on a regular basis, as well as how editorial practices work and how scholarly content is bundled and then sold back to a given university. And I also wanna say the other thing we tend to do really well is uh, organize ourselves in teams and create the, the way to communicate best to the rest of the campus. Um, and develop relationships with other areas on campus. Next slide, please. So I just wanted to point out that the research process is hugely complicated and um, complex. And there are lots of roles that have to be played by many different entities on uh, campus in regards to this. Um, as well as at exterior to the campus with the publisher. But generally the library and librarians intersect at the beginning of the research process and then at the end. Um, we start at the beginning by helping to develop literature reviews and, and work with faculty on that development. Sometimes at some institutions we're providing author collaboration tools and helping to develop in depth data management plans uh, so that the data can be found after the fact. Um, and librarians also promote the utilization of key standard practices for persistent identifiers, such as ORCIDs or um, ways for authors to be identified readily. And we understand how digital object identifiers are created and generally what institutional identifiers are. Once the research is performed and is ready to be disseminated, Librarians can help with finding proper data repositories and following deposit protocols and can also assist with depositing of articles and auxiliary materials, both in the local institutional repository, but also in external ones as well. And we can also help with the discoverability of the local research. Next slide, please. Um, here's another way to look at the places where the library intersects with the research process. And this is kind of based on what is uh, sometimes referred to or acknowledged as the research life cycle. While we don't engage really much during the actual research being accomplished and being done, as I noted, we um, do have roles to play with certain aspects of both um, the beginning of the research doing the literature review, doing kind of the planning of the research, and then helping to develop the back end side of when research is completed, how to disseminate it and how to share it and, and make it readily available. Um, 
Next slide, please. So I really think that all good relationships begin with conversations. And what we started doing at Portland State is having quarterly meetings with our research office and what we call our digital scholarship team so that we could just get to know one another and understand kind of what their key issues were, where they were having complications and problems, and what some of our key issues were, where we were doing open access agreements, and how to um, really have an exchange of just basic information going back and forth between the two units. We also started holding listening sessions with um, various research faculty on campus that we recognized as potentially becoming allies uh, with us in how to disseminate information, as well as with uh, the graduate students engaged in research. And from speaking with the graduate students in particular, we were able to develop a whole set of programming that we didn't have previously that I think is very meaningful and impactful. Um, we also asked to have an ex officio role and serve on the research advisory council and committee, just so we could be there hearing what the issues were and the concerns were, maybe not necessarily um, communicating much at that meeting, but being more of a listener at those sessions to understand where there were concerns or problems maybe on campus and then figuring out how to do better communication based on that engagement. We also attend research presentations held on campus uh, in different areas and across different disciplines just to see where research is. And that also helps with our collection development and knowing what resources we might wanna be buying or purchasing at this point. And we also uh, recently had uh, a, uh, a major job search for the VP for research. And we attended those uh, recruitment presentations so that we could understand what it was people were looking for in a new leader for that area. And how, again, gain better understanding of what um, the research needs really are on our campus. Next slide, please. Um, one of the other things we also started to do over the last five to 10 years is um, figuring out how to co-promote co key resources and agreements. And we hold specific training on data management planning, on literature reviews, both for graduate students and for faculty. Uh, we have individual consultations with faculty and graduate students on how they can understand their research impacts. and. We also have hold, held some scholarly publishing workshops and plan to hold more of those in the future. Um, when we're participating in a transformative or read and publish agreement, um, we do try to co-promote those with the research office. So we have a library newsletter that goes out uh, every three months. They do as well. Uh, theirs actually goes out every two weeks. And so they're able to reach kind of on a more regular basis, more people than we are. So we would co-produce or, or send them what we were gonna be putting in the library newsletter for them to also put in the research newsletter so that it was readily uh, disseminated across campus. We also produced an annual report from our institutional repository that we would share readily with the research office because it really does show research impacts in ways that they probably hadn't been thinking about before and allows them to see what broad reach some of the research on campus is getting. Um, and lastly, we worked with the research office to help develop how we could co-promote grant funding resources uh, through various LibGuides and through the A to Z database listing of the library resources, just in case a faculty member or graduate person uh, went and looked there for that information, they would see it readily and it would be able to access it. Next slide, please. Um, as curators of information, uh, really being able to share information kind of informally sometimes is really good too. Um, sometimes we send messages to the research personnel we've become familiar with 
either via chat or via email, or sometimes just at a campus meeting that we both happen to be at, to make sure that they understand where things are going and, and what's happening kind of from our perspective and our end of things. Um, oftentimes the research officers and the research officer, the first to know of sort of significant program shifts or pro, uh, program developments that might be happening on campus before a lot of other people, because that's where the research is building. And so they can kind of see where programs might be developing or coming from. And so it's always good to have a, a, a meeting with, you know, informal meetings to keep up on things like that. And lastly, we do have informal coffees and sometimes uh, beers in the afternoon um, together, just so we can chat about campus activities and, and news and just make sure that we're all staying on the same page with what's happening on the campus at large. Next slide, please. Um, so here's just an outline of like some of the ways you can come together and co-plan sort of key events. We try to get together and co-produce what we're doing for Open Access Week. Uh, Research Week is another event that's held in the United States that we try to co-promote and help. And in the past, we've had researcher talks in the library as well as promoting faculty books that are being published. We have a whole shelf, a display shelf in our most heavily trafficked student area where we display faculty authored works as a way to highlight what is happening on campus. Um, we, um, we have a dedicated funding support for article processing costs for a minimal amount that we try to make sure faculty are aware of. <laughs> And we also try to support text and data mining opportunities for faculty and graduate students where we're able to do so. Um, in the research office, um, they are helping to co-fund one of our transformative agreements, which is really great, so that the financial burden isn't solely on the library. And I think once you establish a relationship with the research office, th asks like that are more easily done and are able to go forward. Um, as noted, we do try to share known research outputs, uh, uh, research outputs with the library. Uh, we ask them to share what what they're aware of for inclusion in the library repository, but we also try to share the impacts of those back. Um, and um, we have also asked that they include the library repository on some of their key research pages. Just so once again, we're being highlighted along with uh, the research activities that they are providing. Next slide, please. Um, lastly, we've really been working on, and this came from our meetings with our graduate students, library spaces um, for interdisciplinary research endeavors. Um, researchers on campus and especially the graduate students rarely have places where they can interact with other researchers from different disciplines. So having a dedicated space in the library, um, which we call the graduate student hub, really helps provide that opportunity for um, students from different subject areas on campus to come together and get to meet one another. And sometimes they're able to create um, research connections where they can figure out new ways of doing research together in ways they probably wouldn't have in the past. Um, again, we've in the pre-pandemic, we were holding annual events in the library to promote scholarship from different disciplines and invite the campus to participate and celebrate in researchers' achievements. We are slow in getting back to doing that, but we really hope to do that this next year. Next slide, please. Um, so if we think of collaboration as a pyramid, um, the base that remains strong is through consistent and planned conversations. Um, by developing this habit of inf information sharing, the community begins to form across both units and celebrating the successes and strengths promotes respect and greater understanding across the whole university of how the two areas can work in tandem with one another. And that is the end of my presentation. Um, I look forward to any questions people may have.
Thank you, Joel. I'll just ask Vayner to come onto the stage. Um, to our online, to our online um, colleagues, do you have any questions? To our colleagues inside the hall, do you have any questions? Okay, there's an online question. There's a big drive awareness for embedded librarians and wondering, and wondering, shouldn't the research officers also be embedded in the library? Um, Joel, or? I think that's a great idea. Um, I think it's a great idea. Uh, that has not been something that we have done, but uh, I could see where that would work really well. And it's a really great idea to explore. In your presentation, all good relationships begin with conversations. So I think at this point, we need to first start the conversation with our research officers for those who haven't yet, and then we could go and progress on to being established within the libraries. <laughs> um, <laughs> is there any other question for Vainant? Not as yet. So, Vainan, I have a question for you. Oh, is there one? Oh, sorry. Please go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I just want to understand something, especially after Bennett spoke about uh, the quote from uh, George Bernard about the illusion of communication. So, I don't want to leave this uh, conference without understanding something, especially when you talk about the I think it was your, your last uh, uh, scene there about the gods, uh, in Latin of the gods, the faculties. So that maybe also we need to be able to first, do we understand the words we use when we meet those people of what we need? So especially, I, 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 I grab to understand the difference between open access and open science. Which one is, is what? Because I'm telling you, we got there to those people using these words, thinking that they understand something. And that whereas even ourselves, we can't even differentiate between those words. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Um, there's a number of ways I, would, I can respond. And I first, I would like to say something on the first question, but it actually adds to yours. Um, I think what we would really like to see at the end of it all, not whether one is embedded in the other, etc., is but is that librarians and research office actually speak the same language. And I think that is critical to start off with. We, in the library sector, we have a very specific vocabulary. In the publishing industry, we've got a, 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 you know, our own um, conversation, etc., and these things, should we really ask an academic to understand our world in many ways? We know that these are the mechanisms they need to use. But I agree that, first and foremost, if the question comes to me as to what is the one thing I think that we can start off doing correctly, and that's to ensure that the research office and all the librarians speak the same language, meaning they actually internalize the strategy that we talk towards the same thing, and that when they go out or whether we go out, it's the same vision that's being expressed, but in a language that's, that everybody can understand. And quite often, I think academics, and that's why I actually pointed to the gods. Um, in many ways, they are above in terms of they do certain things. They've got their own um, culture or subculture on campus. And, and we need to expect that we need that we are penetrating or entering into an, an environment that's not necessarily um, easy to traverse in many ways. They have their ways, and we just have to accept that we have to accommodate them as well and not force them to understand our environment. So it is about collaborating. It is about coming together and jointly going forward. Thank you, Vainant. There's another question. So hi, um, my question is also for Venant. Venant, I was interested to know, um, at Rhodes, do you see a difference between different subjects and academics' interest or acceptance of open access publishing? 
Thank you, Maria. I think it's a, again, it's a question I wish Debbie was here, Debbie Martin Bell. She's our principal librarian for digital scholarship unit. Um, where to is here and might be able to help me, but I understand from what I could pick up already that the peer sciences in certain areas, you find individuals that say, no, I don't go for certain journals, I don't care about open access. Humanities, I find often when it comes to articles, more accommodating, but not necessarily when it comes to books. They want to publish. They want to make money. So it might differ from different disciplines. Um, in our case, the, I said the, the, the you know, botany, for instance, is being difficult, but in environmental learning, again, we are busy with a massive project, a 30-year knowledge commons creation that's totally linked to the SEG um, portal in terms of every aspect of, over 30 years. Where does it link up? And that's where you see in, academics work so closely. And these are A-rated researchers with librarians, including a cataloger to create a single language to actually get the information out there in an open environment. Where to is that you're finding as well, if I may? Sorry, I'm putting you on the spot. Yes, I can say to some extent we've made inroads in terms of, earlier on I said we have handpicked some research institutes Mm -hmm. uh, like the ELRC, the Environmental Learning Resource Research Center, and the others are joining. It, there's, a, there's, a, there's this project that we call Open Knowledge for Open Scholarship. So it is that type of project that is now you know, sort of fascinating them, and they, and they see the value of opening up knowledge for, for, for everybody to, 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 to have. But in terms of publications, I don't think we've made, you know, you know, the best inroads in terms of uh, uh, making them understand why they should publish in open access journals or, you know, yeah. We have one more question. Thank you very much. Is um, Emily, uh, sorry, Joel, is Joel still with us? Yes. Joel? Okay. Yes, yes, she says. Uh, Joel, Joel, thank you very much. Um, you know, for some of the ideas and tips that you've shared with us. Uh, my question to you is, um, and, and I assume all of those activities and suggestions that you have, that you have uh, tried it and you are, in fact, um, doing that uh, together with the research office. If that is the case, what is a what was the success or do you find do you think it's successful how effective has it been and what impact had it be had it had from the library side and then also from from the researchers um, side um, so that's really my question to you then just a general comment uh, both from Vainan's uh, presentation um, and yours um, I could say from my institution, we have certainly done quite, quite a bit of those. Uh, but but I, I share some of the um, challenges, let me put it that way, that Bainand had mentioned. From I'm still amazed, even what I would think has been very effective. Um, if we send out communication or we researchers come to us and we tell them or we assist them, um, and we do this, um, they say, okay, um, but, well, you know, they're actually not sure if we actually, re if that is really true or, but if the research office tells them um, that, uh, then suddenly they say, oh, they heard this from the, and I thought, but we told them this is what it is. Um, and, um, and, and then we, we've tried quite a number of things. Uh, I have to say, uh, at some point I decided, um, well, I guess there are things that they're going to do their way and there are things that we are going to do our way. That we agree on some of the things where we can work together. Uh, so nowadays, um, we uh, promote them also on our newsletter. 
They had to have this, uh, at one point I said, we can have one newsletter even. No, they will promote us from there on their list. They will have their distribution list and so on. And sometimes I think it is so unnecessary because we're actually reporting to the same DVC. So, so it is challenging, uh, but I think at my institution, we have tried to work it out we, as we go along. Uh, but when it's necessary, and especially around strategy, depending on the DVC or the vice president that you work with or vice provost, it can work. Um, and I think if that person really believes and really wants to bring together those, I think it uh, depends on who the directors are, depends on the staff. Um, but it can work, but I think to help with that, you actually have to have the top executive uh, play that, that role. Otherwise, it's my turf and your turf. But the main question is, um, Joel, yes, um, how successful have you been uh, in, in your attempts to, to work together with the research office? Thank you for that question. Um, I, I feel that we build, are building success by success. Um, it, it's, been, it, it, it's been slow. And it has taken time to get to the place where we are now. And I think currently we're at a very good relationship with the research office and we have a lot of really good information sharing going back and forth. Um, that said, as I noted, they are hiring a new vice president for research on campus. And that will, we will to a certain extent have to start over and rebuild a relationship with that person after they come into campus. At the same time, um, we'll be hiring in this next fall a new library dean. And again, we will, um, we will have to make sure that the new library dean coming in considers this to be an important role for us to be playing on campus with the research office as well. Um, but I will say um, I there are three ways I would say that we feel like this has been successful. We do have um, a readily engaged uh, conversation on a regular basis now with research. And during the recent research awards, they acknowledged and recognized the library multiple times in that presentation, which was really great to both hear and see because it is truly their own event and they didn't necessarily need to um, acknowledge us at all. Um, secondarily, the graduate student hub that we created in the library um, is seen as a very positive thing across all of campus. And um, we feel like that is a very successful engagement that we both uh, financially committed to and made happen. Um, and lastly, we are seeing a growth in um, open access publishing and open scholarship occurring on our campus. And we feel that that is also because of our collaboration and being able to jointly get the information out about the opportunities that are being provided. And it, um, it, it's taken a while to kind of percolate down, I think, to everyone in the in the um, in the university, but it's starting to feel like that's really understood by more and more people. So I think that's also been a success on our behalf. Thank you, Joel. Um, we have a comment, online comment. It's from Sue to Prof Emery. Thank you for a very insightful presentation. I loved your ideas. Oh, okay, thank so you. I guess that's just a comment. <laughs> Thanks. Do we have any more? Um, time is getting ahead of us and we need to come to an end with our session. Um, do we have any more uh, questions? In that case, I would like to thank our presenters. Um, thank you for this informative uh, uh, presentations.